Having coffee with Frank Collider. Enjoy your coffee this morning. We got a little wrapping to do. First off, I think a lot of you people like to talk about Mad Sam Stefano. Do I know him? Did I know him? Yeah, I know him. And he was a psycho. Yes, he was. He definitely had mental, mental issues. I could tell you how Sam, he was a rapist, he was a car thief, he did everything. This guy was a bad guy. His claim to fame, who put him in action, was Paul Rica. They met in prison. Sam was like a hillbilly crook. That's why I call him. But he knew how to make money. And he got tight with Rica, Paul Rica in jail. I think Paul Rica had a four-year sentence then. And uh, he told him, I can make a lot of money. I put money out on juice. For those of you that don't know what juice is, that's you loan money out and you, you get a lot of money back in interest weekly. Depends what you want to charge them interest, all right? So he says, I need 100000 If you give me 100000 I guarantee you the first year I'll make a million dollars. Rika trusted him. Give him 100000 Sam went into business. Now, he wasn't. They didn't want him to be involved with the outfit, okay? Because he was loud, he was obnoxious, and he drew heat. So that was the plan they had with him. They would protect him. They don't want him dealing with drugs. Because drugs drew a lot of heat. But they would take money from drugs if you got into the business. See, it was like being a hypocrite a little bit. So Sam got into that business. He made a lot of money, but he needed a crew. So being that Tony was with Milwaukee Phil, they put Tony with Sam to watch him, to make sure he was doing everything right, and if he needed to take care of people like off him, he was there. So Tony went into this, and he watched with Sam. Now, I'll tell you a brief encounter. I had a couple of brief encounters with Sam, not problems. One day I get a call from Tony, to take a ride with me. He said, I got to go pick up this lawyer on Roosevelt Street. I think the guy's name was Foreman. No. Uh, I can't think of the guy's name now. He was a lawyer. So excuse my memory. But I do remember picking him up in a coffee shop. So we go pick him up, Tony and I. He says, Sam wants to talk to you. Oh, okay. We were in the neighborhood. We figured, because you had been in avoiding his calls. No. Nah. He said, Tony, I've just been busy, you know. So he gets in the car, where we go. I don't know, Tony don't tell me shit. We're just going by this guy, Sam, Sam's house. So we go to up west where Sam lived and we go into the house and the wife, hello, how are you? you know, and Sam is down in the basement. So Tony and I start going down the stairs like again, I don't know what's going on. And when we get to the bottom, Tony kicks him in the back and he flies down the stairs. At that time, I take action. So I grabbed the guy and we tie, We put him in the chair. We put him in the chair, and then here comes Sam down the stairs in his robe and pajamas. And he's swearing to the top of his lungs like a psycho. And I looked and I said, my Lord, this guy's a nut. You know, the way he was carrying on. And he starts slapping the guy. And then he got a, a, an ice pick. And he said, yes, son of a bitch. And he stabbed him by the Kilunis. And I thought, this is going to kill this guy. You know, not that I was worried about it, but I, I'm, I'm, this is crazy. You know, what is this all about? So he tells you, you, man, you embarrassed me. You were supposed to show up in court to take care of that guy, take care of that thing. I gave you $900. You make me look like an ass so you didn't show up. The kid got found guilty. $900. And he slapped the kid. He slapped, Sam slapped this guy. So the guy's screaming and crying. Sam pulls out his, his ding dong and he starts peeing on the guy. I couldn't believe my eyes. When he was true with this guy, this guy was thanking him for being alive. Then he yells, 
woman, woman. And his wife comes down the stairs. Yes, honey. Get me some coffee. She goes back up, brings some coffee. And he proceeded to keep on slapping and abusing this guy. So finally, nothing, he didn't get killed, not done. And then we took him, Tony and I, and we brought him back to that same restaurant. And that's when I first met Sam. And I said, this guy is a psycho. The second time I met him, I was in a uh, North Avenue Steakhouse with Dickie Garman, who's dead, and another guy. And we're sitting at the bar. And at the bar is Matt Sam and Jack Cerrone. Jack Cerrone was a boss, but he wasn't the boss, the boss. There's two young ladies at the bar. At first, I didn't notice who was sitting at the bar. And then they, Sam followed the broad to the bathroom. And then I hear her screaming, ah! He's forcing her to get ahead. So I told Dickie, what is this guy, fucking nuts? I said, I said, I'll go over there. Nah, leave it alone, leave it alone. I said, this guy's a psycho, man. He's raping that broad. He said, hey, that's her business. She must have let him on. So after they were true, they bought the broads a few drinks. They patched it up. I'm, th I'm surprised they never called the police. And then he come over and said hello to us. And it's not the kind of guy you wanted to be a friend with. I'm, I'm not lying to you when I tell you these stories. I met him a couple other times after that. I know stories how he killed Axon Jackson, True Tony. Uh, Axon Jackson is the guy that was uh, bookmaking and collecting juice money for Sam. And uh, he was keeping the money. And one time, and he lied to Sam. And Sam would forgive him or slap him around. Axon Jackson was about 300 pounds. So this is the story Tony, Tony told me, Splatchon. He says, and then Sam had it. So Mario, Tony, Sam, and there was somebody else. I can't remember off the top of my head. It's in one of my books. They got him, and they beat him, mercilessly beat him. And I hung him on a meat hook in a meat factory. And the guy died of a heart attack. And Sam was very upset because he personally wanted to kill him. He didn't want him to die of a heart attack. And Tony said, this guy's a psycho. I said, no shit. I think the last time I met Sam, I was in Stateville Penitentiary. He'd come in there, he, he had all his veins removed in his legs. And I met him in there. And let me tell you something, when you're in the joint, when you're in jail, you're not a tough guy anymore. Especially if you're an old guy. And I tell you, I couldn't get his nose out of my ass because I had a big job in there. But I never abused guys that were bosses when they came to jail. I've seen guys do it that were like me, abuse bosses, like treat them with disrespect. I never done that. It's but they're older than me. But I've seen guys do it. When I first got out of the witness protection program, I did a video with this guy, Robert Allen, who became my partner in tours. And I, I don't really not find it a video, but I done it. You know, it's my first first video. And it was Dennis Ironley, a former FBI agent, and Denny Griffin, a co-author of my books. So I'm gonna show you a little, little bit of his video. And I do hope you enjoy it. I'm not that happy about it, but don't forget, I wasn't a professional like I am now. I want you to prescribe to this channel. I said it right this time. Hit that button. Prescribe. You got it? Or I'll say I'm not going to tell you no more stories and you're going to be fucked. Thank you very much. We'll have coffee soon. Chin time.